in the X. Long That's time no see, Alan. How are Where you? you been? Good, good. Y'all ready to get started? Wherever you are. Awesome. Oh, we got another one. Who is it? Jennifer. So this is session 13 of how to qualify potential buyers and sellers. Uh, I read over the material. It's pretty good. I like it. Um, so let's, I like an open forum. Shoot me your questions. I mean, make it interactive. I know sometimes it's like going over just course material. You're like, oh, okay, I'm not learning anything. So if you have questions or anything that pertains to the situation you're in or working with your clients, you know, shoot me the questions. So this is just the course overview of what we're going to go over, how to keep every lead, how to follow up with the leads, strengthen the relationships, and qualify the potential buyers. Um, so, yeah, today's agenda, find the motivated, classify by able, ready, and willing. We're going to qualify the buyers and sellers. Your number one job as a real estate agent is to find ways to get in the path of the motivated buyers and sellers. There's some interesting statistics in here um, on where leads come from, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, let's see who jumped on. Misty. Hello, Misty. So we're going to go over finding the motivated. What myths do you hold about finding buyers and sellers? How about you, Matt? Uh, I guess I don't know. I don't, don't really know any of the bits. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. just, I just been kind of or told what to do. Right. Right. <laughs> Anybody on uh, Zoom land have any myths that they can think of about finding buyers and sellers? No. Maybe that they're easy to find, that they'll just come find you. That's a good point. Yeah. A lot of people get into this business thinking that it's the business is just going to fall in their lap. And that's something that, you know, from the outside looking in, I thought the same thing, you know, watching my wife do it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy, you know, but it's really it's not. Um, you know, you can't be a secret agent. And that's what I've learned. You have to tell every single person, you know, you know, bring it up in some sort of fashion in the you know, it doesn't, as long as you're coming from a place of care and trying to be relational with that person. Um, but yeah, you're right. hundred percent on that one. That's a good one. So this was the statistics I was referring to. So, and this goes back to the same point that to that myth, um, you know, referrals from is a friend, neighbor, or re relative, all buyers, 47%, first time home buyers, 57%, and repeat buyers are 41%. That's a staggering statistic because you think, you know, if you look online, it's like, oh, you, if you could do social media and, you know, um, all these other things, then you're going to get all these clients. And really, like when I listen to people talk about social media, and it may just be, us and I know that people do have success with it. Um, but you know, we have I don't think I've ever got a lead from organically from social media. You know, I, I know people do, I just we haven't had that success. Our success is from referrals from our friends, past clients, stuff like that. Uh, and we get a lot of repeat businesses as well. Um, so that's why you see those are another top statistic on how buyers find their agent. Um, any questions on that? Another point that I would make the first sale open house. We've, you know, I listed, I don't even know how many houses last year. And I don't think I had one lead come from a buyer calling my sign. This year I listed one, uh, the one on Brooklyn. And I think I got four from that one sign. But last year, of all the listings, I didn't get one. This one property, I get four. So, you know, it's hit or miss, really. It, it really is. A lot, of, a lot of these buyers, they can shop online now. They don't have to use the agent to see. You know, they can see a lot of what they want just online. So, you know, that's just food for thought. That's why it helps to know 
and get in front of those people and just that way when they think about real estate or they look at that house on Zillow, they think of you when they want to go see it in person. This is the same statistics for sellers. Uh, it's it's exactly the same used by a previous agent or referral from a friend, neighbor, or relative. So again, it's not, you know, those statistics speak for themselves. So this is command opportunities. Any ahas on that? Any thoughts on these statistics? Matt? The first, um, I guess the referral for the first time home buyer. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I guess that one was a little surprising. Yeah. Percentage. Yeah. It is. That is. I thought the same thing. I'm like, man, that's a high statistic. 47%. That means, you know, five, really four out of 10 buyers are going to go to someone that referred to them from yeah. someone else that they know. So yeah, that was you know so that for me that was that yeah and and that goes back to loving on your your clients or just not even clients just people in general like you know when we have an event we we try to invite every single person because we want them to be in front of them and just they know that we're realtors and we're hosting stuff for them to come enjoy you know and it makes them think of us when someone asks if they if they know of a real estate agent um so yeah Jennifer, Greg, Alan, Michelle, any questions on those statistics? I don't know if y'all seen them or not, but. I see them. I'm driving. I'm headed there. You're headed here? Yeah. Well, be careful. I'm going to make you read this next paragraph, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so now we're going to go over how to classify by able, ready, and willing. This was a big struggle for me in the beginning because I, you know, you get, you know, when you don't have a business, you treat every lead. You're like, you know, you you're willing to go waste all of your time and spin your wheels on these people. Uh, so learning how to classify them and qualify them goes a long way, and it's saved me my personal time with my family by doing so. Focus becomes increasingly possible in direct proportion to how clear and clear you are about what you want, when you want it, and what you must do to get it. Gary Keller. So you have able, willing, and ready. Come from curiosity. So this is how you would classify your opportunities. A buyer, a seller. A is able, ready, and willing to do business in 14 days, zero to 14 days. A B buyer and seller is able, ready, and willing to do business in 15 to 60 days. And C, uh, able, ready, and willing to do business in 61 plus days. So I will say that most online leads are going to be in that B to C range from what, what I've seen in our business. Um, typically, the only time you're going to see A class buyer or sellers are when they are a referral from <clears throat> someone you know or you've worked with in the past. But most online leads are B or C leads, I would say. Um, so it's very important to learn how to classify those buyers and sellers as to what they, you know, what, what they are. Any ahas on that? Carl missed most of it, but this is just classifying the buyers and sellers, A, B, and C. And it's based on the time frame that they're willing to do business. So what I was saying was most of these online lead sources are B and C class that I would say, um, you know, you may get an A here and there, but, you know, they're tough to convert in less than 14 days. And from my experience, any ahas? Let's, let's get somebody else on here that. Alan, any ahas on that? Actually, it's the first time I've seen it. So, I mean, I know I've heard it mentioned in other classes, but the first time I've actually seen it broken down that I remember. So, yeah. Uh, like you, I could see me going after different people all the same way at first since i'm new to this yeah. so good to keep in mind for sure 
<clears throat> yeah. Again, you have to learn how to approach people based on their timeline, really. You know, if they're a nurture lead, you have to really nurture them and you have to find ways to engage them back. Because if they're not an A class buyer or seller, <clears throat> if they're a C, you know, you have to like you may send them the text or email. They're not going to respond right away because there's no immediate rush for them. Uh, so you have to find ways to engage them and get them to engage back with you. So calls, calls to action, stuff like that. Things that you will they, like pose a question that will make them respond is the best way that I've found to to get them to engage back and just keep that conversation going so you can nurture them for that 60 plus days. Um, so, yeah. So this is how to qualify them. This is very important when you're working with buyers or sellers, mostly buyers, because they don't have anything to sell usually. Uh, so win-win, document, follow a checklist, and abide by fair housing regulations, which I hope everyone is doing. So these are buyer lead sheets. We use one of these uh, for all of our buyers. It's essentially like a checklist. It also helps us get 100% database health on that client when we put them in command. Because if you have their birthday, their anniversary, things like that, it helps you know, it also helps engage in additional conversations with them few, later on. You know, you see a birthday coming up. Hey, happy birthday. You yeah. know, little things like that can go a long way. Uh, so, yeah, you do, does anyone, everyone use a buyer lead sheet? Oh, no. We do. We're good. Yeah, yeah. somewhere we can. Get. Yeah, yeah, we can get these printed off for you. I can show you ours as well. It's pretty simple. It's kind of like, especially if they're looking for specific things, you can kind of dial it in that way and get specific Some on what. Yeah, because, and, and I don't know, I mean, speaking for myself, I'm terrible about remembering things and I, I'm like, oh, I'll just remember all of this and you forget all of it. So it helps to have it on paper because you can circle back to it and look and say, oh, okay, this is, and I don't throw them away either. I'll try to put it in command and then I keep a folder of them as well just so I can flip through and look uh, because sometimes you overlook things when you're putting it in command or things you're like, oh, that's not pertinent information. And then it comes back and you're like, okay, that was pertinent information. Uh, but really it's capturing their information, their name, their email, you know, like I said, their children's names if possible birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. Uh, and then finding their motivation. I always like to ask buyers or sellers like, hey, you know, what's prompting the move or what's bringing you to do this? And let them talk. Like, you don't have to talk. You know, we, we I'm guilty of just engaging so much that I just keep talking and I don't let them speak, right? So the conversation is super one-sided. So I've learned through doing this, that if I just ask a question and just pause, those pauses allow them to open up and they'll start to tell you every more than you usually even need to know. But it's also additional bonus information that you get to capture. Um, Norm, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? You want to learn how to qualify buyers and sellers? I just said you got any money. Yeah. <laughs> Trust you shopping or not? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So then how long have you been? So it's just a questionnaire, essentially. Uh, ours is not this in depth. It's more like bullet points of just how do you, you know, information, name, date, email, uh, phone number, what they're looking for in a, in a home, you know, what areas, why they want those areas or, you know, pertinent information like that. But we can get a buyer lead sheet out to everyone that doesn't have like one. That, actually. Might have to be able to send that to a few people. Yeah. Kind of gauge, like, even for themselves, how serious they really are. Yeah. You know, like, am I just trying to waste your time? Yeah, for or sure. Yeah. Because of, I want to talk to you, or is it yeah. because I actually want to buy a house? Right, right. Stop paying well, and the, that information will go a mm -hmm. long way for those C class leads because when you know that they're 60 plus days out and you know their birthday, right? or their anniversary date, little things like that allows you to reach back out and engage. So you're not always like, hey, did you see this house? Or, hey, this just came on the market. You know, you can have other conversations built around that information that you've captured from them. So it's not so transactional, it's more relational. Uh, and we get a lot of good feedback from that. <clears throat> so we're supposed to role play for 15 minutes. Um, 
but I don't really. We can role play if y'all want to role play. Greg, you want to role play? I say we skip it, brother. Say that. All right. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. So, Greg, y'all use a buyer uh, lead sheet, right? Y'all use something to capture all the information? Yes, we do. We send this out uh, just by an email or text, and they fill okay. it out. And uh, nice. Paige gets out information and then puts it on command for us. Yeah. So that's even more streamlined than ours because ours is more like when we have a buyer's presentation, uh, you know, that's that's how we present ours. But I like that method, Greg. That's good. We might try to implement that. Good it's stuff. Worked out well. It's worked out really well for us. And again, it just gives it, you know, uh, a little of a head, head start of getting information before we actually start the transaction. Mm -hmm. We get everything put ahead before we actually do everything else. Yeah. Well, and one thing I like, like I had a it was a listing appointment and I met with the wife and she told me her husband's name. So I wrote it down. Well, then the next time I went back to meet her husband, I already knew his name. So as soon as I walk in, I'm like, hey, you're Richard, right? You know, so he automatically was like, oh, he already knows my name. And it was just by writing, taking those notes and putting it on a sheet like this that I could capture that information. Because if I try to remember that, I'm like, oh, I don't Rich, you know, like I wouldn't have remembered his name. So it's it's very important to do those little things. Um, so these are touch plans of how to add your B and C buyers uh, and communicate with them. So there's a 19 to connect, which is four touches, quarterly phone calls. Uh, 12 monthly emails. So that's an email every month. And then two touches of promotional direct mail, such as a magnet calendar, print, printed market report, et cetera. And then an annual event, party, movie, screening together, get together. And then 36 touch, which is four telephone calls, 26 biweekly emails offering some type of information or value to the consumer two events, get-togethers, parties, four promotional direct mails, such as a magnet calendar, market report. So what I would say on these, the events, if you're a new agent and you don't have the funds to like host this big event, use someone else's event, leverage it out. The trunk or treat for here, like invite everybody to that. You don't have to pay for the event, right? But you get to engage with those people. Little things like that, uh, especially things that are going, I know Matt, I told you before about using the um, like the events that are happening in Roanoke, like the rail yard dog games, the Red Sox, things like that. That doesn't cost you anything to promote those events. Right. But it, it, it allows you to engage in them, uh, engage with the client. We have a agent in the outer banks and he used chat GPT. He sent in a, a mastermind group. So he literally went in chat GPT and said, create 12 emails of events that are happening in the Outer Banks uh, with links to the sites. And it literally spit out 12 emails for him that he could copy and paste, tweak a little bit, make sure the links are active. But it literally spit out all the information for him. They cost him a dime. And it allowed him to leverage those events, community events, to touch his database. So it looks like he's in the know. He knows what's going on. Uh, so those are little things like that that don't cost you any money. And you can do the emails through command, you know, which is a free source resource as well. Um, the quarterly calls, those are those are easy, you know, call and just talk, say hello. You know, you don't have to ask for business or um, it doesn't have to always be about real estate. You can call and just have a conversation with them. Um, the monthly emails, again, you can do the chat GPT. You can pull resources from anywhere to do those type of things. Um, and then the last one is one to submit. A high value touch that solidifies the relationship you have just established and opens the door for future interactions. Another tool I like to use through command is the neighborhood search function which if you have their email and you have a neighborhood that they like, or it can be multiple neighborhoods, you can set them up on a smart plan where it will email them monthly of all the active listings, all the sold listings, and it'll give them their average price. And it's all free. It's all automated. You don't have to do anything but select the neighborhood that they like. 
and it will email them monthly for you. And we get a lot of engagement from those. We'll have people reaching back out to us. Hey, can you subscribe me to this neighborhood or that neighborhood? I want to see what's going on over there. So it just allows us to keep plugging in multiple. You can have more than one, one neighborhood. Uh, and it allows them to see what's happening in their market. I do that a lot with sellers too. If it's a cold, like an internet seller lead, I'll put their address in, drop their neighborhood, and I'll just send them that monthly email of their neighborhood of what's happening, what's selling, what's not selling, what's the average price. But it, it looks like I'm in the know of what's going on in their specific neighborhood. Because it's not like a zip code. It's not 24019, 24012. It's literally neighborhood specific. Like, so it's very, valid. very dialed in. You know, it's super, super uh, detailed. Uh, so that's a good one to use. And if anybody wants help setting that up, I'm more than happy. Free resource, again, doesn't cost you any money to do those things. But it's a, it's a way for you to continue to touch that client or that lead uh, multiple times and qualify sellers. Same thing. We use a pre-listing questionnaire as well. Um, just asking them what's their motivation to sell? Why are they selling? Why are, are you downsizing, upsizing, new addition to the family, little things like that. Um, and then, you know, just Let's see what all they have on there. How do you? How much do you owe on the property? How much do you want to list the home for? What would happen if you did not sell? Those are good questions. How soon do you need have to be there? Will all the decisions decision makers be there when we meet? So that's probably a good tool to use when you're going on a listing appointment. I would say. Yeah. I'm guilty of not asking any of those questions because if I'm going on a listing appointment, I don't. I'm going. <laughs> I'll figure it out when I get there. As long as I know your name and your address, I'll be all right. I usually do, uh, you know, try to do a preliminary market analysis on the property. Uh, and then I always communicate to the sellers like, you really can't, I can't give you a detailed number or accurate number until I actually walk the property, you know, because you can pull only so much information from the GIS. So, any questions on that or the Touch plans. Jennifer, do you use any smart plans or touches? Not as of yet. I am Not brand new yet. at this. Awesome. So I'm just putting my stuff in command now. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, command is amazing. It's really a great resource. And I will say that I was looking at the statistics yesterday of how many agents like use, you can compare your database health compared to other agents. So you can like select top agents in the market and see your database in comparison to theirs. It doesn't tell you who they are. It's like an average, but it, it's a good insight as to how you're doing with your database and how, how healthy it is. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You should check that out. See what else we got. There's Michelle. Any oh, ahas on that? Any questions? I like that fire leads you in. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great tool too, because you can kind of get, you know, you can gauge their motivation on if they're just looking, they're window shopping. Are they serious? Do they have to move? You know, do they have a lender? Things like that are pertinent information, you know, because you, you know, you get some of these leads and you're just assuming that they're ready to go and you don't realize that everything else is in shambles, you know? So you have to kind of nurture that lead versus it's not just a layup, you know, they're not slam dunks. Very whatever. So lead follow up plan. So we have a tool called we use. It's called the fourteen days days of pain, and it's literally miserable because you call, text, and email the first day. Call and text the second day. I can go over the list, but it's it's not fun. But it's called fourteen days of pain for a reason. Because uh, a lot of the times you you really won't engage with that 
lead for three to four days before they will engage back with you. So that's where the follow-up comes in. And then that's when you are able to convert that person um, and stay top of mind. By if, you, if you're constantly texting them or emailing them, seeing an email or phone call from you, you're going to stay top of mind. Um, yeah, you'll know if they're serious to see that Kroger and they run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's uh, our coach asks us that. He's like, how many people are in your database? We're like, I think it's like 2,500 people. And he's like, how many of those people would you stop and talk to at the grocery store? I'm like, maybe like 300 the most, you know, but that's a big gap, right? And it's like, would I even stop to talk to the 300 or would I just see them and keep walking, really? So probably like 10 out of 10 to 20 out of that whole database would I actually stop to talk to out of those leads, you know? Yeah. Try to remember their name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. We need to add that to command, like a picture function. We can just snap a picture. So, Oh yeah, that's that person. Remember their face. It's happened to me yesterday. I ran into somebody. I'm like, I'll try to introduce my wife. I'm like, Hey, this is my wife. Yeah. Summer. And I'm like, I don't know what your name is. I had this. I was left it. Yeah, I had yeah. the same thing. We were at the car dealership dropping off a car, and this guy comes up and he's like, "How are the Belchers?" I'm like, "No, I didn't make sense." I'm like, "I hope my wife knows who this is." You teach them about drip campaigns? Are you doing what drip campaigns? Uh, a little bit, not really. It's uh the touch campaigns. No, oh. you teach them how to set up flex drips, right? No, no. It's not me. I just, like strips. I just sold $500,000 house. I had talked to this guy in a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to know about the flex strips. Y'all do flex drip campaigns? Flex, like, some drip things. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. select yeah. what house, like, what they're looking for in a house. Mm -hmm. and anytime it comes in the market, it just sends it to the email. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I do that. Go in there every Monday or Tuesday, and you also have a lost roster. People always on the campaign ship the text. How's it going? How yeah. You? That's a good one too. Because yeah, it'll, it'll give you their activity. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of agencies don't have like man, they just have flex. Yes. Yeah. And that's all they yeah. use. Yeah. It's kind of basic, but I mean yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. You see CMAs, you can, yeah. you know, and I get the login activity too. So a lot of the times when I have someone log in, it'll say, Hey, you know, yeah, so and so sort of logged in. Yeah. Or Matt just looked at you yeah, know, you're Matt you're logged in. Hey, yeah, hey, and then I'll click on the link to see the properties that they viewed, and I'll ask, I'll look through the properties and say, and then I'll text them, hey, what do you think about this one? Pick a specific one out of that list and just see if they'll engage you off of that. That's like the people that I have that are like, in the past, they haven't been super serious, mm -hmm. but every once in a while, they'll reach out to me because it'll send them a house they want to look at, and they'll be like, hey, let's go look at this. Mm -hmm. And I just try to like keep in contact with them. Yeah. Well, a lot of this, I have a lot of people too that will say, uh, you know, these are, they think that I'm actually going through and picking them out myself and sending them to them. Because mm -hmm. they'll say, you know, that's not what we're looking for. I'm like, ah, it's not really in my control. It fits in those parameters. And so that's why I sent it to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you said three bedroom, yeah. two bedroom. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, Sorry. Yeah. I had that problem. Uh, took this couple, I took them, showed them a house. And they dropped the price on it. Mm. And well, when they dropped the price, it renewed it and it sends it back to us. Like, oh, we already looked at that and we didn't like it. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that. That one didn't yeah. send it to you. Yeah, I mean, I never tell them that it's an automated system. No, I yeah. just let them think that it's me sending them, you know. Uh, but it also helps you narrow down their search too when they do engage back. They're like, oh, don't, we don't like split foyers. Well, that's easy. I can just select everything but split foyers on there. Uh, so they don't send them anymore. Is everybody on Zoom familiar with uh, the Flex Drip campaigns? I am not. You're not, Alan? No, sir. Greg, I know you are. How about you, Jennifer? I can't say that I am. Okay. I've had a lot of things thrown at me lately. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. Uh, so essentially what the what they're referring to is when you log into your Flex MLS and you get to see every active listing on there uh, on the market in our MLS, you can create your contacts in there. You put their name and their email. But then when you do a quick search, you can filter out through their 
through what they're looking for. So based off of that buyer lead sheet, they're looking for a three bedroom, two bath, 1400 square foot. And this is their budget. You literally just input that information and they want Roanoke County. You select that and then you would just save it as a search. And then it will automatically send them what's active. And then if say a new one comes on the market tomorrow, it will automatically email that person if it fits in their criteria, it will automatically send them that listing. Alan, if you want to jump on and Jennifer, you as well, we can go over that. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You can do it through command as well, but the only issue with the command version is they have to actually download your app in order to for you to send them the listings. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, I usually do the recently I've been doing like the the flex and then I'll just text them the app so if they want to download it. Yeah. But hey, if you're in the neighborhood and you want to look at a house, yeah. You just pull up your command app and you can search on the map for sure. And then just show me if you want to look at the house. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that comes through the flex drip is branded to you as well. That's another benefit to it. So it'll have all your information at the bottom. Your your name, your contact. So it looks like it's directly from you. Recorded training. Yeah, I'm sure there is a recording. They're always Yeah. Even like the training. Yeah. There's plenty of resources on YouTube, but if you'd like some little hands-on training, I'd be more than happy to show you. You know, I can send you a link because I. I've been taught it before. Like you don't use it, you forget it. So yeah. Did a uh, YouTube search and I found the video. It's pretty. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty easy to yeah. follow. Yeah. Cool. Kind of brush your memory up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, and the searches are pretty easy to set up. It's when you get into the CMAs and stuff like that, the market analysis that you do need a little training. And there's certain things that I always forget. Stuff like that. Um, so ahas to achievement. How has your thinking changed? What ideas or mindsets are new? What do you feel differently about and what was meaningful to you today? Is this the end of the class? Yeah. No, no way. Well, it's all just like oh, okay. call people. Yeah, it's gonna go through. They want us to make y'all call everybody. I don't think anybody's ever had a call people. Do what? Oh, like nobody's made us do that. No, no. It works. I've when we when I did bold, so you have to they do that in bold. Essentially, they make you go call people. Yeah, I've done uh, it. it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. But I've gotten leads from it from actually just calling people. So I'd like go out on break and make the calls and come back with have a, and have an appointment. So it works. Super just awkward. doing it. It is super awkward. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just started deleting contacts from my phone. I'm like, I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you. So she can't say that I didn't call anybody in my contacts. I only have one one number in my phone. Yeah, I called them. It was my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, my wife and my mom. That's the only two people I call. Them. Both... I'm like, hey, I just want to free face. I'm taking a class and they're making us do this. So Yeah, exactly. But it, it lowers that, you know, it, it lowers that, you know, their their guard a little bit. Yeah. You started off with that. You know, like, yeah, but also your, if you want to buy a house, I'm here to help you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually what I like to do is just go into conversation about them. What's new in their world? Yeah. Usually they'll ask you the same question. Then you get to tell them, hey, I'm doing real estate now. That's really all you need to say, you know, and then invite them to coffee or something like that. Yeah. Or a free event like the Trunk or Treat or Easter Egg Hunt, something like that. I'm sure there's plenty of those going on this weekend. Um, so, yeah. Any new tools that y'all learned on this one from those? 36 Touch, the 19 Touch, the buyer's, uh, buyer's qualification sheet, seller qualification yeah. sheet. about the rail dogs or whatever. Yeah. I thought about it. I don't know. I have to figure out it's your last. Can you do raffles? Yeah, I wonder. we've given away tickets to. Okay, I thought about board and, to the rail dogs because I like to go to that myself. Yeah, one time we went. This is a funny story. We went to a haunted house last Halloween, 
And when we were in there, someone had ran into a telephone pole outside, cut the power off. So wow. they made us leave. We're leaving. He's like, hey, here's five tickets. Come back tomorrow. We're like, okay, cool. So we're walking to the car. It's literally five minutes later. Power comes back on. He's like, hey, y'all can come back in if y'all want. We're like, all right. He's like, I'm like, you want these tickets back? He's like, no, y'all just keep them. So we go through the haunted house. So then I'm like, well, let's just raffle the tickets off. Let's just give them away to somebody. You know, little things like that. You, you can promote. And, you know, I've never had anyone complain about, like, us promoting those home shows, the rail yard dogs, any new restaurants that come up, come up in the area. You know, I've never had anyone complain about that. And actually, I've turned some of those new restaurants into followers of mine by, by supporting their business. So, yeah, I think it's a good to just brainstorm it. Be good for like social media posts. Yeah. Hey, leave your comment. You know, I'm going to yeah. think randomly somebody's going to sure. give a certificate to yeah. Chili's. Exactly. Yeah. That opens up. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, there's, you, mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. It's And that's what Matt and I had. We talked about that before was like, I struggled for a long time. Like, what do I post on social media? Like, how do I engage these people with content if I don't have something under contract or da, 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 da. I seen a cool post yesterday. If you have a buyer that's looking for something specific, post it like, hey, I have a buyer. This is what they're looking for. You know? Yeah, that's only really going to pertain to other agents. But you might catch a seller that's like, hey, that is what I'm, that's my house, you know? Like, maybe I should reach out to them. And you have both sides at that point, you know, little things like that, that don't cost money. And you don't have to have action going on in your business to actually engage a lot of the social media stuff, but it's also a way for you to touch them, the, the client and stay top of mind. I think um, it was Katie that said that Frazier <clears throat> would act like he was at an inspection. Yeah. Do like a live video straight up. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's pretty Smart, yeah. Go tour a new home, dude. Go go to a new listing that just came on the market and do a video tour. But it can't hurt, you know. Got a lot of activity. Um, <laughs> from your video, <laughs> yeah. That was Pat Palmyra, and I don't know what what got into me, but I was like, epic. I'm doing like like real Instagram. Yeah, real. never done it before in my life. Yeah. And I found a filter that I was like, okay, it doesn't look like a filter, but I feel just I feel good about myself. And then I just like hammed it up a little bit. I like yeah. did a twirl in the kitchen. I was like, look how big this kitchen is. Yeah, it works <laughs> too, you know. I wanted to do one last so weekend, but I had good time. Yeah, they're tough. It's hard to see, and you really just have to film it and don't even watch it. Just post it. Don't even think about it. Like. Yeah. No, you can't. But hers was just a real. Yeah, so that can have ended in the before for kitchen and stuff. Yeah. It's very time consuming. Yeah. You know, after using it. Right. Yeah. But I think also going back to tagging your or qualifying your buyers and classifying them, you can tag them in command. So then when you go into your contacts, you can filter it. Hey, I want all my A clients right now. Hey, I'm going to call them about this event or this new listing that's coming up, little things like that. But tagging your database is extremely important in order to, you know, approach these people strategically, you know, approach them strategically, email them strategically. If you know they're a C client, you don't need to be sending them, you know, uh, you, don't, you don't have to call them every day, things like that. But if it's an A, and you want, they're actively shopping within 14 days. That's someone you want to stay in touch with every day, you know? And I'm terrible. My wife gave me a hard time the other day because I have all my clients pinned at the top of my phone and she's not one of the ones that's pinned at the top. And she's like, why? I'm like, because I'll forget and I won't text that one person. You know, I'll just let it slip through the cracks because there's so many, you know, that you, it's just a lot to juggle to, remember people that you've met once or twice that are actively looking and ready to buy. So I'll pin them at the top so I don't forget them. So success system, daily success, 10 conversations, 10 contacts added, 10 handwritten notes, five social media, 10, five, one social media engagement, the 10 conversations and 10 contacts added. That's a tough one. 
it's hard to talk to 10 different people every day uh, and add 10 new people to your database. If you do it, you will be successful. I can promise you that. Um, but it is tough. And I, I've had to get out of my own comfort zone of like when we sit down at dinner, like we went to Ichiban the other day and it's just talking to the people at the table, you know, going out of my way to, hey, how are you? You know, what do y'all do for a living? Just asking them questions like that. Are you celebrating a birthday? Little things like that. It's a conversation. Did it turn into a contact added to my database? No. But it's still a conversation I got to have with that person. You might see them next time. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see. The handwritten notes. Uh, Jonathan did an amazing class on the handwritten notes. He's also, Jonathan Sweat, he's also excellent at sending those out. I love getting them in the mail when it's like, hey, I'm just thankful for you you know, and being in business with you, they, they mean a lot. It may take them three minutes to write me a letter and send it to me. Um, but those are good. Social media engagement. We went over a lot of social media, ways to uh, engage your social media followers with free content. Like I said, chat GPT will write a lot of the stuff for you if you ask it to. It's an amazing tool. And I highly recommend anyone and everyone checking it out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does everything. Like I said, he, it wrote 12 emails for him to send out with the links. Uh, sorry, we got interrupted in our meeting class. It wasn't Norm this time either. <laughs> it was another in. So, yeah, always follow the, follow the DNC list, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act. I don't know if anybody's ever looked into signing up for this, but it is not fun. Anybody ever looked into it? Like the um, do not call? The actual do not call this, like getting registered to scrub numbers on it? No. Yeah, it's not fun. I put myself on the list, though. Yeah, have you? Yeah, yeah, it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. call me on my yeah. I know Greg does a lot of calls. Greg, have you ever, have you ever tried to register for this? Do not call this like so where you can scrub numbers. We looked into it. I looked into it and actually I just use Max platform and then through the office itself. So yeah, it's tough, you know. It really is. So essentially, like if you were if I was to go buy a list of phone numbers from someone, it's not gonna tell me who's on the do not call list. So if I put them all in my command system and just started calling them. Okay. You know, they could be on the do not call list. Now, any lead you get from an online service, obviously all their information is given to you. Same with you meeting someone at the bar or at the restaurant. If they give you your phone number, that's you don't have to scrub those numbers. It's really for like cold leads that you just got old numbers for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Some a lot of the a lot of the uh, dollars will scrub the numbers for you. I don't know how good of a job they do at it, but a lot of them will. We've used Land Voice. It will tell you who is um, on the do not call list. So I don't know. You got like a ten thousand dollar fine. That might be worth. Waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was saying that when his taking a look, he was talking about it. Any your defense, you could say, I've purchased the software. They said that it was scrubbed, so yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, if, you have, if you're using a software, it's a little bit different. It yeah. It's pre-scrubbed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't know how they would respond to that. Yeah. I agree. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. It's a good one. Not everything has to be selling. You can just have a conversation with someone about anything other than real estate. Figure out what they're passionate about, what their hobbies are. Probably a line somewhere, you know? So you can engage on that level. It makes the conversations going forward a lot easier too, you know, because you're not always having to search for something to talk about. Um, so yeah, I'm giving you 10 minutes to prepare your conversation list, which we're not going to do. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really every time we get to that portion, like our phones just not function. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Except there's no, there's no signal in here for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. Good mind. It's you just think that's why I was late. Really? Text messages in the 30 minutes after. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. I did text it happened all morning. Really? Hmm. I'm like, I'm about to drop you guys. Our director of operations, her, she thought her phone got wet and it wouldn't charge because it wouldn't turn on or do anything. So she took it to the store. Apparently, it got caught mid-update. So her phone was just updating. It was perfectly fine. He just like hit a few buttons on the side and it reset the phone and it was good to go. Oh, my Lord. I'm like, how does it get stuck like that? Well, apparently, if you have, well, yeah, 5G and 4G, Mm -hmm. They were saying that when it switches between the two types, it delays your text messages. Really? And you don't want to use the message app that comes with your phone that's not the original one. It's uh -huh. like the the blue little circle that has like the little, I don't know. It's like a newer application, mm -hmm. but there's some bugs with it. Huh. That's because you're Android. Yeah. Yeah. Matt is too, it looks like. Is that an Android or yeah, Apple? Yeah, it is. Do you have any text messages? My, my Android works just fine. One thing, uh, this isn't this isn't um part of what this teaches, but command has been updated so much lately, especially the app. So what we've started doing is tracking our daily input. So there, if you open up the browser version of command, you can track your daily actions, how many conversations you had. How many appointments did you go on? Did you sign any agreements? Did you have any closings? You can literally track your activity daily and it will project how much money you're going to make based off of the activity that you are taking daily. So you can go back and look and track your, your data. Uh, and that's, that's a cool feature in command. Another cool one is if you actually, we always just pick up the phone, go to our contacts and call someone. If you go through the command app, find that contact. You can call them through the app. It'll go straight from your phone number, but it will log that entry into their, uh, like their, what I forget what they call it. Basically their activity, it will log it. So it will show when you go to pull up that contact, it'll say, Hey, oh, I called them for one. You know, it will, it will log that data. It will tell if you email them, text them or call them, it will capture all of that information. Um, another good tool in there is the notes function on the for the client because I have you have a conversation with someone you're doing a million other things they've told you why they're moving from Vermont this is what they're looking for they have two Weimar runners you're like I didn't catch all of that if you put it in command just put it in the notes when you call back there's that conversation piece how are the two dogs doing you know little things like that but if you don't have it in one set place, you know, you're going to lose all that information. And command is the perfect tool to, to capture all of that information. That's all we have. We're super early. So how about we just go questions? Any questions from Zoom, Liam? <laughs> Y'all want to make some cold calls? Just make sure they're not on the DNC list. No questions. No cold. No questions. <laughs> <laughs> Texts are easier than calls, right? Right. How about you, Alan? No, sir. I can't think of any. So how long, Alan, how long have you been in real estate? Uh, well, really, just getting started. I'm still waiting on my license to actually get approved. Oh, nice. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. So have you played around in command at all? No, not. I've looked at YouTube videos a little bit. I don't have any of that access yet. Of course, without the license, no MLS. So I'm kind of waiting on yeah. that. So start you gotta wait on that. I got you. I got you. How about you, Jennifer? I'm just a little ahead of Alan. I just got my command access on Friday. Okay. So I'm going through yeah. videos right now. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a whole lot of information. It's a whole lot to learn. Um, you Glad know, just take it. it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. You know, you can't you're not going to learn it all. Know it all. I learn something new on there every every day. So. 
It's it's a it's an amazing platform to use though. Greg, y'all use uh, command at a high level, don't y'all? I think we put Greg to sleep. <laughs> Fair enough. How about y'all? Uh, I go through there also. I'm kind of trying yeah. to tinker yeah. with it, trying to do things out. How about you, Matt? I've been uh, one of my tasks is to get more contacts in command. Yeah. Especially for my phone. Yeah. I was really bad about working on mm -hmm. So I'm on there at least adding contacts yeah. lately. Have you tried to export all of them into a PDF or a CSV and then you can import them that way? That, that's the easiest way to do it. You can just dump them all at one time. Now, if you have like new contacts added, obviously you have to go transfer them. But right. if you just needed to bulk list your contacts, you can do that as well. Okay. Well, I also have like a lot of like out of town businesses mm -hmm. that were in contacts. Gotcha. That was like, it was a weird transfer yeah. situation when I was younger. Right. So they somehow got my contact. So I'm kind of going through the list to make sure. Yeah. Cleaning it up. Yeah. yeah. Scrubbing the list. Well, and it's like mine. I have to, when I did it, I had to delete a bunch of agents out of my database because I had real estate agents in my, in my CRM. I'm like, I don't need you in there. Uh, <laughs> so I had to go through and clean up a bunch of those as well. Um, but there's another on, on the desktop function of command, they have like a updates box where it'll tell you the new updates for the system, which is pretty cool. You'll always learn something new there, something that, that they have improved. Um, so that's pretty cool. How about you, Michelle? You like command, right? I do. And I totally, it's like I'm telling about my head here. Yeah. I forgot we had talked about how it's nice to be able to make the phone call through that, yeah. make the email through that. And totally did the yeah. complete opposite the other day. So. Yeah. Well, especially when you have a when you have a C buyer that's 60 plus days out and you can't remember when you called them because it was 45 days ago, you know, or you texted them. Yeah, you can look back at the text, but more than likely the call is gone. Yeah, you could dig through your emails and find the sent email. But wouldn't it be so much easier if you could just go into command and say, oh, it, I emailed them at this time, this day, texted them, you know. You can put what you texted them. It'll ask you if you want to log the information. Uh, the email, it will actually put the email in there for you. It will it will show the email that you sent. So as long as it's your KW email or whatever email is synced with your command, it will log all that activity. It's very trying to have people, and I'm currently trying to link it to my social media platforms. Yeah. But I'm waiting on the system support to fix it because it's yeah. there. It's not connecting or linking. I don't know why. Yeah. Hmm. That is weird. But they got to get back to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always something new, something you can improve to. You can you can ask Faye. Faye's, uh, we've we've found a few bugs here and there, and we reach out to Faye, and Faye takes care of all of it for us. So. Yeah, she helped. She got me in touch with the support team. Yeah. But. I haven't heard back from them, but it must yeah. be a complex issue. You broke it. Yeah. All I did was put the link in. Yeah. 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 So any questions from Zoom land? No, sir. I appreciate it, Mike. I've been on an off phone call, so I apologize for not being in. No, no, you're That's good. I should have been. You're good. You're good. I was just teasing that you fell asleep. Get naps while you can, right? Yeah, I know, right? I'm going to go take one after this because we cut it short. So I just got to hide for another hour or two and they'll think that I was here the whole time. So that's my excuse because it's time blocked on my calendar. So, Life um, is done. Well, Mike, I appreciate you, man. I must have gone off, but thanks again. I appreciate yes, you doing this for us. Thank you, Greg. Uh, buyer sheets, qualifying buyers, sellers, any questions on that? No. I like to get a copy of them. Yeah. Are they on command or? That's a good question. I'm going to see if this one on here is, if we're able to pull it down. Another good resource is KW Connect. I don't know if anybody's utilized that. I opened it. I just, yeah. I didn't know where so you can search for anything on there and it will pull it up. Slideshows, presentations. Oh, cool. uh, you can type in buyer lead sheet. You can ask for. 
um, people's legion models. I mean, there's so much information on there that's free for you to look at. KW Connect, just type in the search function. There's videos, all kinds of stuff on there. You can learn so much from it. So yeah, I did see that from uh, Scott Leroy. Yeah. So yeah, like so when you when you get to the point where you like build a team or you have you're hiring an admin or a transaction coordinator, they have 30, 60, 90 mm -hmm. like review periods, documents on there that you can go over and download for free. So you don't have to go out here and reinvent the wheel as well. So it's pretty cool. Jennifer, did you have anything else? Alan? No, thank you so much. Yeah, thank y'all. I do not. Thank you. Awesome. If y'all want, uh, let me see if I can put my phone number in the chat. And then if y'all want to reach out and set up, we can go over the smart plans or anything like that, how to touch your database through the, you know, anything like that. The neighborhood nurture, we can do any of that. Thanks. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Go out there and kill it. I don't know how to work Zoom, so...